Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today I have kind of a partial get ready with me and most everything I'm using is from the drugstore. I've already jumped in, got a head start. First I applied the NYX, this is Juice Gloss. This is the Strawberry Flex one, smells delicious. Not super long wearing, but a great prep product. And then I applied the Milani eyeshadow primer. And for my foundation today, I used one of my favorites from the drugstore and it's the combination of the L'Oreal True Match in W2.5 and the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear in 475. So I applied those foundations with the Real Techniques Seamless Complexion Brush and that brings us to where we are right now. For my eyeshadow palette today, it's going to be my first time using it, but you know I have used several palettes from Alter Ego and I love them. This latest palette of theirs called the Mirage Palette. Let's see, I'll show it to you. Any guesses what this palette reminds you of? Yes, it is one from Huda Beauty. It's the Empowered Palette. I have to say the shades look very similar. And I've actually only used the Empowered Palette a couple times. I got it right at the beginning of summer and it just felt a little too dark and sultry. So I put it away and lo and behold, Alter Ego has come out with this one. So I'm gonna start off with this shade right here. I'm gonna use the Sigma E50. The shade's called Clay. Now this might be a little too peach toned. Actually, it's not too bad. It's pretty close to my skin tone right now. So kind of a nice neutral color. It's not gonna be real lifting like a highlighter on the brow bone, but at least it's matte. Okay. Let's go in the crease and as I'm looking at the palette, let me just swatch a couple of colors here on the back of my hand. Okay, I went ahead and swatched the whole palette for you and you can see the mattes are very soft, pigmented. The shimmers, these two are really great. These two are quite flaky. And then we have some different, let's see if I can show you over here. So these two right here are actually creams. So I'm gonna leave those on my hand to see if they actually dry down because if they don't dry down, then they're gonna be problematic. <laughs> but um, they did do, so this one right here is this shade and it has like a gel in the middle of it, which is exactly what Huda Beauty did in theirs. But theirs, the Huda Beauty one does not ever set, so I never use that shadow. But I'm anxious to see how these two perform. So I think I kind of want to go somewhere in like this section right here. A little bit of kind of a rose gold on the lid with maybe some plummy gray tones and then some warmth through the crease. So Let's just dig right in. I'm gonna be using a bunch of new brushes from Ruffer, partly because they're new, but also because they're clean. <laughs> but they came out with minis and maxes of several of their most popular brushes. So this is the 15 brush, which they already had. And then they came out with a mini and a max. And the mini just seems to be thinner. And then the max looks like the bristles are slightly longer and maybe even a little bit fuller. So we're just gonna play around with all those. So I am gonna start with the 15 max and let's put a little bit, I'm using my hand as my guideline here. But wait, before we do that, I forgot, I'm gonna use some of this tape. I used this in my last Get Ready With Me and I've been doing this so often it's been making my eye looks just go so much faster and I like the look. So this is just kind of like cosmetic tape from Real Techniques and they, I, it's interesting because you don't think it's going to be real sticky, but when you go to peel it off, there's quite a bit of tack on it. So I still would recommend taking a little bit of that tack off before you apply it. Now let's go in with the 15 Max brush and we're gonna start off with a little bit of this shade right here in the corner called Dunes. And Alter Ego shadows generally are pretty soft, little powdery, but I have found them to be pigmented and last well on the eyes as long as you use an eyeshadow primer, which I do with everything. And then we'll deepen that up 
with a slightly different tone. We're gonna go in with this one right here, which is called Tomb. Very kind of fall, <laughs> fall-ish names here on this palette. Ooh, that's pretty. Ooh, really like that color. This brush is like perfect because it has a little bit of a point on it. So you can build up in the crease, but then it's blending everything out as well. Hmm. Really like this brush. Kind of like an all-in-one type of brush. See how few brushes we can use today, right? Let's deepen things up with this shade right here called Endless. And whoa, that is pigmented. Just a little tiny bit on the tip of that brush. But man, these are blending so nicely into each other. Very nice. All right, next let's take heat. And I do have another liquid shadow that I might use later, but I wanna start off with this one. And just see, oh, that's pretty. Very coppery toned, mm, really pretty. And then let's use a little bit of this shade, which is kind of a rose gold and plum tone kind of mixed together. Let's just do that right in between the outer corner shade and that lid shade. Very fiery red or fiery orange, isn't it? All right, let's go back to Endless again on that brush and just kind of blend that in the outer corner, darken it a little bit. Now I've waited for these to dry a little bit and I'm, I'm patting and there's a tiny little bit that's coming off, but they are kind of setting down. So let's, I know it's a little risky, but let's go ahead and apply a little bit of the, let's do the dark brown. We're gonna do Crypt right here. Let's use the O2 Mini and a little bit of Crypt. And I'm just gonna kind of coat the tip of the brush with that right into the roots of my bottom lashes. And then I'm going to pull this out and wing out the shadow there. Very, very pigmented. And the stark brown is almost black. It's pretty though. Wiping off that brush really well, I'm gonna go in with the other side of it and use that shade Endless to set that in place. So if it at least has a setting quality to where it doesn't remain really oily, then if you set it in place with a powder over the top of it, usually that will make sure that you get a full day's wear out of it, but we'll find out. And keep in mind, I do have this tape here, so it looks like a very dramatic wing here, but when we take the tape off, hopefully it won't be as dramatic as it looks at the moment. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the outer corner of the lower lash line. Just tap that in there over the top of that. And then I'm going to switch, wipe off that brush and switch to this shade right here, Tomb. And let's just bring that kind of in the center of the lower lash line. I wiped off the 15 Max brush, and now I'm gonna go back with a little bit of that first shade we started with, which is Dunes, or the first shade in the crease, I should say. And then add a little bit of Tomb, just in the outer part. Make sure that's all blended nicely. Now, as I mentioned, I want to use some cream shadows. So these are liquid shadows. These are new from CoverGirl. I have not watched any reviews, read any reviews or anything. So we're gonna find out if these work together. This is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist and this is the Kelsey Ballerini Liquid Glitter Eyeshadow. And this particular shade is Glitter Up. And this has a little more of a cooler, champagne-y, slightly pink tone. Then I also have Nashville Dream. 
and I'm sorry if you can hear lawn maintenance being done in the background. <laughs> All right, and then the other shade I have is this red shade. I'm gonna use this in a different video, but this is the shade Forever. But I'm just gonna open up this one. We're gonna see how this works and if it lasts well. Really reminds me of the Stila glitter eyeshadows or the liquid eyeshadows, same doe foot applicator. I'm going to swatch this. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, so smoother, more of a metallic color rather than actual chunky glitter. Hmm. Let's just add a little bit of this. See what happens. We'll do it kind of on the, the inner part of the lid. Oh, that's kind of pretty actually. Just wanna brighten up that copper shade a little. And now as one final step, Let's see how this works as a base. And let's go back to our palette. I'm gonna use a little bit of this shade right here called Cleopatra. And just tap a little bit of this over. We're just making our own multi-chrome shade. Ooh, I love that. Okay, very soft look here. And then if you need to touch up at all with that heat shade, can do that. We're just playing, playing with some makeup here. We're gonna leave it there. And now it's always hard to tell until we peel this off how it really looks. Cleaning up with just a little bit of almond oil. I don't really have much fallout, but just like to add that little extra bit of hydration here. So I just used a baby wipe to wipe off the swatches and there is still some staining and product left from those cream shadows in the palette. So fingers crossed it stays all day. On my under eyes, I'll catch it up real quick. I just did a little bit of the LA Girl Pro Conceal Corrector in Peach with a combination of the two shades of the Revlon 5-in-1 Skin Awaken Concealer. I have 050 and 040, and that has helped just correct all of that under eye darkness. Now let's get to the face. For contour today, I pulled out the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer in the shade Bronzed Bell, and I'm using the rougher brush number 35. Just kind of a nice round brush. Let's see if we can get some of that product. And the Putty Bronzer is actually pretty forgiving. I feel like you don't have to worry about getting too much pigment all at once, and it does seem to blend out nicely. It's been a while since I've used this. really like that brush for kind of laying down the contour. And then I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 107 brush, just blend all that out. Easy, hmm. I forgot, that is a really great cream bronzer. Okay, now for bronzer, I'm gonna deviate from the drugstore to a new brand. This company sent me a couple of their products and I just, I love this and I forgot to use it in my last trying new products video. It's by Flight 70. This is their Color Back Burnished Bronze in the shade Vacation. And this brand overall is just really focused on good ingredients, recyclable or minimized packaging, but also focusing more on mature skin and mature ladies. So I love that. This packaging, super slim, but just check it this out. It's just so pretty. It's the combination of kind of bronzer and blush, and it's that color back. So we're adding some just really nice, vibrant color back to our cheeks without being overdone. So I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 103 brush, and I have been really enjoying this when I'm in a hurry. So this is gonna just eliminate several products. So I'm going to just sweep this across, and depending on where you put your brush, you can get more colors. I'm gonna sweep it across first, go on the top of my cheeks. And this isn't, I, I, it is matte, but it's not a flat matte. It's more of like a satin finish. There's no sparkle. But do you see what a beautiful color that adds to the cheeks? So even though it's not drugstore, it's about the price of drugstore if you were to do bronzer and blush and highlighter. And we kind of just got all of that done in one step. Is that not beautiful? And I suppose you could kind of like dip your brush more into the grooves if you wanted even more color. But for right now, I'm gonna stop right there 
and if we need to add more after we powder we can but i just had to show that to you okay let's go ahead and powder the skin again nothing new but i'm going to use the elf hd loose setting powder under the eyes and then the nyx mineral finishing powder and this is in the shade light medium under the eyes to set i'm going to use this beautiful rougher brush oh my goodness this is a limited edition and it's celebrating their four years for your anniversary, but I just think it's so pretty. And this brush is so soft and it seems like it's going to be the perfect kind of under eye setting brush, or you could use it for highlighter, but I just want to give it a try. Let's just try it out, right? We're having fun today. Wow. I always enjoy something super soft under the eyes anyway, and this is probably the softest brush I own. Wow. All right, for the brows, we do have something new. This is by Maybelline. It's the 36 hour tattoo studio life proof formula. And I have the shade 250, which is blonde. Now you're supposed to be able to, you know, brush this on and go. And as long as you don't use any oil, removing products it should stay for multiple days i don't know about that but i've only used this once and if you know me you know i just feel like i need a little bit of definition on the lower part of the brow first so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use the nyx micro brow pencil in ash brown let's see if this is a good color match or not i feel like my hair is just getting so dark it is because i haven't had color done not for another couple weeks I'm going to try to refrain from filling in my brows too much with the pencil. So let's go in with this and it's a pretty cool shade, tiny little brush. And I'm going to just kind of lightly brush through the brows. I feel like sometimes these get a little messy. So that's why I like to give myself a little bit of a boundary to color kind of in between. We'll see how well we do here. Okay, not too bad. I feel though like I need to just fill in a couple spots here with my pencil. So not a one and done type of product for me personally, but if you like something like this that you just brush through your brows, this definitely, when it sets down, it has some pretty good grip power and you definitely wanna clean up around the edge before it dries. It really starts to become difficult to remove. So, all right, brows are done. Let's go to lashes. Now I have a lash primer and a mascara that one of you told me I just needed to try. It's by NYX, it's called On The Rise. And so we have a primer and a coordinating mascara. And this is supposed to be amazing. I've not tried it though, so let's try it out right now. The primer says, boost your mascara's potential infused with castor oil and volumizing waxes, including sunflower seed wax and rice bran wax. This gray black primer preps eyelashes for on the rise volume lift mascara or your favorite mascara. It leaves behind a mascara enhancing layer that amps up the appearance of lashes after mascara application. And if you know anything about lash growth serums, castor oil is an ingredient that is supposed to help promote lash growth as well. So we're hoping that we're conditioning our lashes and helping out our mascara. Really interesting kind of thick, feels a little thick in there, but uh, this looks pretty black to me. Let's just check it out here. Now, if you're somebody who likes just a very natural lash look, I think you could get away with just the primer. I only have it on the upper lashes, but it looks really nice, soft, it's not clumpy. All right, let's go in now with the On The Rise Mascara. This ultra pigmented formula catches and coats lashes in a matte black color for quick charge lift and volume in just a few strokes. Featuring innovative applicator shape, the part hourglass, part rounded brush delivers high drama, intense volume, and serious elevation. All right, so this is also supposed to help with curl. 
So, all right, here, hmm. I guess maybe you gotta look up close to see the hourglass. It's not, oh, oh, okay. I see as I am putting it on my lashes, I kind of see that. Now, interesting, the primer brush is a natural bristle brush. This one is one of those plasticky brushes, which is not always my favorite, but let's see what it does to the lashes. Okay, a couple coats on the upper lashes, and it is really pretty. I wouldn't say it's super volumizing, but at the same time, my lashes do look long and full, a little fluffier. So let's go ahead and put it on the lower lashes as well. I'm going to start off with the primer and then add the mascara, and we will hope that we do not have any smudging today. I have some major mascara to clean up under the eyes, but I'm gonna let it dry first and go back to the inner corner with just a touch of Cleopatra in the corner here. A little sparkly, but that's okay. Let's add a little touch of the CoverGirl. That's better. I just want a little more brightness, not quite. This much yellow. Ooh, that's really brightening. All right, and then around the edge of the lips, gonna break the rolls again using the Max Soft Ochre Paint Pot. There's just nothing at the drugstore quite like this, but you can skip this step if you wish. All right, I finally took care of the mascara below my lashes, so let's go in with the Essence Eight Hour Matte comfort lip liner and this is the shade cinnamon spice for lipstick i'm going to start off with the milani matte lipstick and this is the shade 410 pleasure you could leave it like this but i'm just going to break the rules one more time and i'm going to go in with the limited edition city lips shade in sparkling cider i mean it's fall we got to use it right it's so pretty there's a fenty beauty lip gloss that looks similar it's this one it's called hot chocolate fantasy mm -hmm. very similar in the tube and similar on the lips this one probably has a little more color to it but i'm just going to Stick with the City Lips one here. Add a little more of our cheek color here. All right, now here is our finished makeup look. And overall, I love how everything came together. I think this color on the cheeks is just perfect for this look and I think it will be great going into fall. I know some of you hesitate to use a bronzer on your cheeks and I think this is the perfect solution because it makes your cheeks just look healthy. And this palette, even though it's dark and smoky, I feel like we got a very wearable look out of it. It does have those hints of fall tones in it, but overall, I think it's beautiful. And as far as these two shades go in here, I will definitely keep you posted, let you know how they wear, but so far, so good. I think these are probably the only two shades in this palette that I probably won't use a whole lot. They're a little flaky and kind of that bright yellow, but otherwise, I feel like the tones in this palette are beautiful. And if you've been eyeing the Empowered palette, this is a much more affordable option for sure. And then as far as the mascara goes, check the description box below. And then I'll also try to remember to put a note across the screen here of how the mascara wore. But so far, I've had zero smudging. As always, thank you so much for watching. Check the description box down below for links and a list of everything I used today, as well as a tutorial on my hair. You might be going, what's the big deal? Well, I did second day hair, but I also have a very fun design here. I'll link the salon visit for that if you haven't seen it. I'll also link down below what's on my nails. I love, love this new shade. It's from Zoya. So all kinds of helpful information in that description box down below this video. Thank you as always so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.